What's up guys, it's Cody here and today I'm going to show you how to build a command block sequencer in Minecraft. But what is a command block sequencer? It's a contraption that when activated runs the next action in a sequence of actions created by the user. Command block sequences are ideal for explaining or demonstrating complex systems and contraptions, especially since they give the viewer a visual representation of what's going on, plus they're just loads of fun to mess around with. So let's take a look at how to build one. We're here in a blank world, ready to start building our command block sequencer, and the first thing we need to do is create a trigger, or some means of activating the sequencer. I'm going to do the same thing I did with the sequencer I used at the start of the video, and place down a command block here with a button on top. We're not going to put a command in this block just yet, because before we do that, we need to create our sequence. The way we create our sequence is actually very simple. Each step in the sequence is simply a new line of command blocks in front of the previous line. I'm gonna start out with a basic three-step sequence that resets at the end. Once we finish building the rest of the mechanics, then we can revisit and maybe add a little more complexity to our sequence. In the first command block, I will put tell raw at a step one. Copy that. Then for the second command, tell raw at a Step two, and finally, tell raw at a step three. Not terribly exciting, I'm sure you'll admit, but like I said, once we finish setting this up, we can make it a lot more interesting. The command block on the end, I'm going to leave blank for now. Next, we need to summon an armor stand on this block. It needs a unique tag so it can be accessed through our commands. I'm going to go with sequence, or perhaps if I'm planning to create multiple sequences, sequence one. I'm also going to disable gravity for this armor stand, although that's not required, but I do recommend it. This armor stand will control which step in the sequence to run. Now let's come back to the command block at the end and type in the command tp at e tag equals sequence one and we're teleporting this back by four blocks. This will reset our armor stand back to its original position, ready to run through this sequence again. Now we'll go back to our command block over here and type in scoreboard players tag at e tag equals sequence one, add step. This we'll give our armor stand a tag that we'll now use to step through our sequence. To do this, we're going to place a repeating command block here and input this command, tp at e tag equals step forward by one block along the z axis. This will move our tagged armor stand one block forward in the sequence. Then we'll place a chain command block in front of that with the command execute at e tag equals a step block data its own coordinates auto one telling the armor stand to activate the impulse command block at its feet we then need to make sure to deactivate that impulse command block so it can be activated again on the next run through so we'll copy the command block here and place it down in front and change this command to block data auto zero. So now we have moved the armor stand forward, then activated the activated and deactivated the command block at its feet, thus running the current step in the sequence. All that's left to do is remove the step tag from the armor stand, so we'll place one more command block on the end here with the command scoreboard players tag at e tag equals step and we'll just remove the step tag finally we will activate the repeating command block and our command block sequencer should be complete time to give it a go step one actually what i'll do well we can see it works here i'll just clear the chat 
step one, step two, and step three. That's working perfectly. Now that this sequencer is working, I'm going to spice it up a little bit. First, I'm going to add a bit of that floating text we saw at the start of the video, since I quite like using it, as we also saw at the start of the video. So I'll go to this first command block, and get rid of this command because it's pretty boring, and put in this command instead. Summon, I'm going to stand 717, invisible, no gravity. Marker, custom name of command block sequences, custom name visible, tags of sequence one entity and MSG one. That will summon an invisible named marker armor stand at the coordinates of the button. The name will show, but the armor stand won't, so it will look like floating text. I've also given it two scoreboard tags, sequence one entity, so it can be targeted along with the other entities I use for this sequence, and MSG1, so I can target it individually. Then for the next command block here, I'm going to type the command tp at a tag equals MSG1, 0.3 blocks upward. This command will teleport the piece of floating text up by 0.3 blocks. Now I'll add a command block onto this line and I'll input a command very similar to the first one. Summon armor stand 757 invisible marker custom name can do many things. Custom name visible, tags of sequence one entity and MSG two. So this is almost the same command as the one I used to summon the first piece of floating text, except this one is summoned in the air and has gravity turned on, so it will fall down into place. I also replaced the MSG one tag with an MSG two tag. I'm going to take another look at this sequence with these new changes. Command block sequences can do many things. Looking good so far. I'm going to try something a little different now. In this next command block, I'm going to put the command entity data at a tag equals msg2. No gravity. That will disable gravity for this second piece of floating text. This will make a bit more sense once I finish this line of commands. Now in front here, I'm going to place down a repeating command block and type in the command. Execute at P. Teleport at E tag equals MSG1. 2.1. And in front of that one, we're going to put a command block with almost the same command. Execute at P. Teleport at E tag equals MSG2 up by 1.8 blocks. Now in front of this command block, we will go block data, one block in the positive X, auto one. This step in the sequence is going to activate this repeating command block, which will constantly teleport both of the floating text pieces directly above me. Observe. And they follow me around wherever I may choose to go. All right, for the final line of command blocks, I'm going to add onto the end here, kill at E tag equals sequence one entity, removing both of the pieces of floating text. Then I'm going to put the command block data, one block in the negative Z, auto zero. That's going to turn off that repeating command block there. Time to test this out. All right. It has, that's done a proper reset. 
Let's remove the pieces of floating text. And if we look over here, it has disabled the repeating command block. I really like the way this looks now, but there's one more thing I can do to make this a lot nicer to use. At the end of this line, I'm going to put a command block with the command, set block 717, stone button facing up. This is going to reset the button to an unpressed state, so I can press it again straight away. Now I just need to put this command block onto the end of each line of commands, except this one here with the repeating command block. For this line, I've got to clone this whole section from here to here, forwards in that direction by one block, like so. And then we'll just pop that command block in there and that's gonna reset the button. So let's run this thing one more time. Oh, hang on, before we do that, this command block here that was previously turning off that repeating command block now needs to be updated since the repeating command block has been moved. So we just change this to a one and that's now going to block data the correct command block. Now let's run this thing one more time. Command block sequences can do many things. Teleport it to my head, following me around. And now everything is reset. I'm happy with this. There are many different types of triggers you can use for a sequencer. Aside from the button, you could use your scroll wheel to control the sequencer. Alternatively, you could activate the sequencer by jumping. Here's a sequencer that activates just by looking down. And there are so many more just waiting to be discovered. And that brings us to the end of the video. But before you go, don't forget to check out today's featured YouTuber, which happens to be, um, uh... I've said all I have to say about this contraption and the video is now coming to a close. But before you go, make sure to check out today's featured YouTuber, TPC Bonehound. TPC Bonehound. Like me, TPC makes command block contraptions and unlike me, he releases maps so he's definitely worth checking out. He has some really great content over on his channel and you'll be able to find a link to his channel both in the description and in the end screen of the video itself. And with that said, thank you for watching, leave a like if you enjoyed and subscribe for more tutorials, contraptions and other Minecraft videos and I'll see you next time.